Though neither of these two empires posed an immediate threat, Genghis was never one to assume the best or to take things on trust. So he set about transforming his army into a most formidable force. He concentrated on developing the skills and discipline of his mounted soldiers, his cavalry. He began by taking the Mongols' favorite sport, the hunt, and turning it into a military exercise. Thousands of men were deployed in long, continuous lines that stretched for miles across the countryside. They would then sweep forward, driving before them all the animals in their path. Other units would be positioned at prearranged points around what would later become the killing ground. Each soldier was taught absolute obedience to learn his place in the line, to hold that place no matter what, and to think and act as part of a larger entity. Once the quarry had been flushed out, the riders surrounded it, preventing its escape. No one was ever allowed to kill until the Khan gave his command. Then it was an opportunity for soldiers to show off their individual skills. What emerged from these exercises was discipline and organization. Genghis structured his armies on a decimal system, decreasing from a two men, roughly 10,000 men, to units of a thousand, then a hundred, down to basic patrols of 10 men known as an Arban. Each unit commander, from patrol leader up to general, was chosen because he was the best man for the job. Most other armies of the time were commanded by hereditary nobles and princes. The size of their armies was an indication of their personal wealth, not their skills as commanders. Not so with the Mongols. Their leaders had all come up through the ranks. They were men who had proved their ability and loyalty in the field. <laughs> The entire army, tens of thousands of men, was closely organized and disciplined. Each soldier was required to keep four or five horses, a scimitar, shield, lance, two bows, and a quiver of 60 arrows. He had to be ready to move, maybe on a journey of hundreds of miles, in just a few minutes. In his saddlebags, he had to carry cooking pots, dried meat, a water bottle, files for sharpening arrows, and even a needle and thread. By 1207, this fully equipped and disciplined fighting force was ready. Genghis had long known that if he was to retain the army's loyalty at home, he would have to provide it with military success, raiding the civilized lands beyond the frontier. That meant China. <laughs> 